Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975 and welcome to a random vlog. I say random vlog but it's been on Wednesday now for what is this the sixth week so there's not so much random in that but when I say random I actually mean what I want to talk about because they're pretty much all over the shop um, and anything that enters my mind that I have nostalgia for. To be fair welcome to the ticking clock room as I always like to say if you don't like ticking clocks tough first world problems that's on you I'm quite a fan it's therapeutic if you will. What do I want to talk about this week? Well, you've read the title, so you already know. In fact, I don't even know what I'm going to call it. Am I going to call it the first movie I saw in the cinema as a kid that I didn't like? Um, spoilers! It was Return of the Jedi, but we'll get to that. Or am I going to call it, um, you know, going to the cinema as a kid, or theatres, uh, was a big deal. I don't know. Uh, well, you already know because it's up there, but I'll figure it out. But the reason I want to talk about this is two reasons. Um, I watched the latest Nostalgia Critic video the other day and it was on Basil the Great Mouse Detective, a movie that I completely and utterly forgot um, existed. A true underrated Disney gem, well I say gem, gem's not really a word we chuck around in the Disney uh, family anymore, is it? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, true underrated Disney gem that I completely forgot that I saw with my uh, both my brothers and my mum and absolutely loved. I uh, must see if you can buy it on Blu-ray. Yeah, absolutely fantastic retelling of Sherlock Holmes with the mouse. And yeah, it was, I loved it as a kid. I absolutely loved it. And it was a big, big, big event going to see that. And so yeah, watching this video, I know some people don't like Nostalgia Critic. I still find him relevant. I still find him funny and I still get great entertainment from his videos. But that's just me. Um, yeah, and it got me thinking about the movies we did see as a kid. And the funny thing is, we didn't see that many in the cinema. And I'm talking about when you your only way to go to the movies was if your parents took you or basically you went, you know, with someone else's parents, such as a birthday party. We really didn't go that many times. And I do wonder the fact that that elevated it to such a state as of being a big, wonderful, magical, you know, exciting event. Not just going to the movies, but, you know, a day out, if you will. Um, made more of an impact on me with the movies I saw. Possibly could have, you know, it certainly have helped with... Uh, why Back to the Future is my favourite movie of all time and has been so since day one. I, I saw it in the movie uh, theatres. Um, now, nah, Back to the Future doesn't need any help. It's just supreme. But, yeah, and, and, and the other reason was someone at work asked me what, Return of the Jedi, um, the first movie I ever saw as a kid was in the cinema. And that's a question that um, dates you, doesn't it? There's no getting around your age when someone asks you that question and you either answer truthfully or completely lie say it was something from the 90s. <laughs> um, don't really want to talk about the 90s when, uh, or late 89 I should say, when we started going downtown uh, with my friends by ourselves, you know, on a bus in the morning at 10 o'clock and coming back, you know, on a bus at like half past five from the bus uh, station and then, you know, having to walk like a quarter of a mile back to your house. Because I want to talk about, you know, the event of going to the, the cinema with your parents and why it was a massive, massive, massive deal. Now, I can only assume that my mum didn't take us that often. I've written down, and I'm pretty sure it's one, two, three, four, five, six times um, my parents took me to the movies, uh, me and both my brothers, all at the same time. Which, do you see, how old are you when you go, you know, or how old are kids now these days? Uh, obviously, the movie, uh, the cinema, I've got to say cinema in English, uh, is in a very precarious position right now. I, I haven't only just sort of recovered from, um, you know, Covid, and now there's a writer strike and an actor strike, which is going to completely and utterly destroy it again. It could essentially cold reboot Hollywood, which, to be fair, would be a good thing. I think we could all appreciate it. Uh, the exceptions of blockbusters like, um, you know, Top Gun. Uh, after Covid, 
post-COVID, there are no sort of billion dollar movies anymore, are there? Probably because of all stuff with intersectional feminism, gender identity politics, gender woke messages and shite that people don't go to their theatres to watch. But um, I certainly don't go as, as an adult, but what I'm trying to, I'm waffling off topic here, what I want to know is, I mean, there are lots of movies. I mean, there were lots of movies released for kids back in the day when I was a kid, but I certainly don't remember many people going to the cinema that often. You know, my classmates when I was in primary school uh, and a very, very, very early secondary school. I mean, is that a price thing, dependent upon the size of your family and stuff like that? But is it a thing now? Um, you know, now that before the strike and shit, that people, you know, cinemas clawed back an audience. Well, no, because the Pixar movies and all the Disney movies are fucking tanking, aren't they? But... What generally, what age, post, post, pre-COVID, I should say, do people go to the movies where, you know, take their kids and stuff like that? Because it really wasn't a big deal when I was a kid. It really wasn't. I mean, it was an incredibly rare treat, which is what made it such a wonderful experience. I'll actually get into the um, bread and butter of this vlog in a minute. But, yeah, I, I mean, is this... Like I said, let me know when you know in your neck of the woods and stuff like that, and your age group, you know, which just tell me what your favorite, what your first movie you saw the cinema was, and then I can work out your age, and uh, you know, because like I said, primary school, um, the the first movie um, I went to see, and it was the first movie I, I went to see um, ever in a cinema, was not by my mum. There was a kiddie in my primary school called Mark Gracie, and. Uh, and this was rare as well, seriously. And he had a birthday party. So, it, you know, how birthday parties work when you're a kid. You either go around someone's house and you have room temperature fucking fizzy drinks and a whole bunch of, you know, snacks, crisps, shit like that, and cake. And you give him a present. And if you're very lucky, you get a little gift bag at the end. Um, or someone takes you on a day out, which was very rare because, you know, this is like um, 1983, you know. Um, not a lot of money going on back then, really, to be fair. And my parents weren't hugely loaded anyway, um, but Mark Racy's parents were, so like myself, my twin brother, I'm not my older brother, because he wasn't invited, because he was in a different year at school, were you know invited to his birthday party, which was, we all went to see Return of the Jedi. I want to say it was at the Odeon in uh, Bristol. And Return of the Jedi is an absolutely fantastic film. It's the third best Star Wars movie, Empire Star Wars, then Jedi. Um, and yeah, as an adult, I absolutely love it. And as an adult, I can completely, you know, repeat performance. I love that movie, especially when you consider how shit all other modern Star Wars movies are. Um, all, all modern Star Wars movies, not all other. <laughs> um, but me and my twin brother, we were a little bit disappointed. And maybe this factors into why we didn't go to the cinemas very often. But we were a little bit disappointed because, and where we would have got these from back then, I do not know. But my dad had a Betamax. So not just a pirate copy, but a Betamax pirate copy of Return of the Jedi. Um, a week or so, from what I can recall, I was seven in 1983, um, before it was released in the cinemas. So he would get these pirate copies. He had one for E.T. He uh, had one for Empire Strikes Back. Obviously, that wasn't new at that point. Um, I'm trying to remember other movies. I can. They all blur into one. I can only remember snippets here and there. But I remember we had Jedi just because it was such a big deal. But And from what I remember, but then that could be, you know, member berry goggles and shit like that. And just my brain sort of freely affecting memories and shit. That I remember it being pretty good quality. But then back then, you probably, you know, would have sat through shit. Uh, yeah, so we had Return of Jedi. And we must have watched it because we loved Star Wars. We had all the toys back in the day. Uh, and obviously, we watched it with my older brother. So he truly wasn't missing out by not going to Mark Gracie's birthday. Um, must have watched it like four, five, maybe six times in the week. Um, obviously there was only one TV in the house, it was downstairs, and only one um, video recorder. So we could have, couldn't really watch it more, because my parents might have wanted to watch it as well, such as the news and all that stuff you generally hated when you were a kid and couldn't work out why adults would watch it, and you swore you would never watch as an adult. <laughs> but yeah, we watched it loads, and so we were really disappointed. In fact, I think we sat there, because obviously repeat performances, you know, as a kid, five was probably quite a lot. You know, five, six was probably quite a lot. So we sat through the general thing, bored titless. In fact, every time Salacious Crumb laughed and every other kid in the cinema was laughing their head off, we were kind of like, I've seen this bit quite a lot, actually. It's not so funny anymore. <laughs> but that was the first film. So yeah, you could argue the first, my first cinematic, um, you know, experience was a disappointment through no fault of the film and no fault of Mark Racy's parents. Uh, although I always thought when I got a little bit older than Mark Gracie, he was a bit of a dick, to be fair. An incredibly spoiled dick. 
<laughs> but yeah, it was a very underwhelming, boring um, sort of uh, experience. Now, the next movie we would have seen, so that would have, I would have been eight, eight or nine, you are two, obviously two years of age in every calendar year, was Ghostbusters. And the thing that determined what movie you went to see back then was what a big deal it was, whether it made it onto like children's TV, such as Blue Peter, they would talk about stuff. You could argue that Ghostbusters is leaning towards slightly more being um, an adult movie. And you know what I mean, because think of some of the subject matter in it. You know what I'm talking about, which scenes. Um, but yeah, it was everywhere on TV. It was in the magazines, there was a video game. Yeah, it made it onto the news as this new, you know, hit comedy, supernatural hit comedy in America. Oh, it's taking the world by storm. What's his name um, with the song? And so that impacted your world. That truly impacted your world. So that would shape what you wanted to go. And also it was a stickers were free in shredded wheat. I'm pretty sure it was shredded wheat. And there was a scene on the back of the breakfast box where you could put the stickers on. So it was everywhere. So obviously as kids, we lapped this up and we begged and begged and begged and begged my mum. I don't know what, what, you know, when it came out. Was it a summer movie over here? Because back then movies were different times of the year in different countries, sometimes different years, period. Um, but my mum took us, and I can assume that this was another reason that we didn't go to um, the cinema very often. A, my mum had to sit for a movie she probably had no intention of watching whatsoever. B, she would have to drive us all downtown. Then she would have to park. Then she'd have to pay to park, obviously. Then she'd have to pay for four tickets. Me, my twin brother, my older brother, and her. This is probably why we never had, like, sweets or, uh, oh, sorry, anything that you would buy from the concession stand. We never had anything like that. We never had a Coke. We never had popcorn or anything like that. I know my mum used to take sweets in, um, allegedly cinema police, with her that she would share with us. Um, but yeah, so it must have been like, I mean, Christ alive how expensive it is now. Like, I mean, seriously, the last movie I went to see was um, uh, Indiana Jones 5. Don't see it, it's shite. Uh, and that was only because my friend offered to pay for me because he didn't want to go alone because I was pretty much was just going to boycott it. Um, because obviously there are only three Indiana Jones movies. But, um, so I have no idea what that cost, but what, four tickets now without, you know, uh, sweets and shit? With it? Jesus, you're probably looking at, you're probably pushing for a family of four, four tickets. You're probably pushing for like, with shit and stuff like that, um, a ton? Christ alive. But yeah, so, I mean, minus inflation, because we're going the other way, it still would have been really, really expensive then. So I can only think that that would limit the number of times we went. But obviously everyone was going nuts about Ghostbusters, so she took us to see Ghostbusters. And again, this is probably why it's one of my favourite movies of all time, because the sheer impact of this being like a big day trip for a movie that you could not escape on media anywhere. Like I said, there was a video game, there was a song, it was on TV, it was everywhere. You know, there was merchandise and stuff like that. We all had glow-in-the-dark Ghostbusters shirts that I still have. Um, believe it or not. I think I put a picture of it on Facebook a couple of years ago. Um, obviously, I can't wear it now. It's quite small. But no Ghostbusters toys, though, were there? There were no Ghostbusters toys. Probably because no one thought it was going to be a success. But yeah, obviously, loads of the jokes went completely and utterly over our heads. But the simple idea of catching ghosts and these amazing proton ones, whatever, um, blew my mind as a kid. So much so that we all came home and got the lot, like double tubes of um, kitchen roll and taped them together and ran around the house and pretending we were Ghostbusters and shit like that, making stuff out of cardboard as you did when you were a kid, like fake glasses to stick over your eyes, pretend you can see a ghost with cling film over the two eye holes you cut out and a piece of string. Seriously, we did this shit. But yeah, Ghostbusters, um, huge deal. And again, epic day out. And all we could talk about that movie, all we could talk about was that movie for days and days and days and days. And this is because at this point, this is the only, only the second movie I'd seen in the cinemas. And again, made it at school. They really didn't go that often as well. It was a huge, huge, huge big deal. Everyone I knew at school, uh, you know, um, who'd seen Return of the Jedi, had gone with us to Mark Racy's birthday party. Then the next movie, uh, pretty sure you're all familiar with this, would have been Back to the Future. And obviously that has shaped my love for that movie from day one. That simply blew my mind. I just literally blew my mind. I wanted to do a vlog for many years about the whole experience of that cinematic um, you know, moments and talk about why that's my favourite movie of all time. But since I love Back to the F to Future too much, or so much I should say, it's just become too intimidating to do. So there's a little snippet in here. Um, yeah, that blew my mind. I'd never ever seen a movie. And obviously, because we didn't go to cinema very often, it didn't mean we didn't see movies. My dad got these hooky pirate tapes and stuff like that. We would rent um, movies and my mum would run, you know, and particularly my auntie Sheila, when she used to live next door to us then, um, would rent, you know, movies that clearly we weren't supposed to see, such as Terminator uh, and stuff like that. But 
Yeah, I nothing had been like blown away, just struck such a call for me, quite like Back to the Future. And again, the fact that we wanted to see it was dictated to you by other media because everyone was going mental for this movie. Um, you know, on I mean, it was on kids TV shows, it was on breakfast TV, it made it to the news. There was a special program. Uh, obviously, it was a promo for the movie that Michael Jocks, John Michael Jocks, Michael J. Fox made um, <clears throat> for it as part of his promotional material that was screened on normal TV and it was screened over here. And he was talking about time machines in movies in general. Um, I haven't seen this since I was a kid. And there's even a bit at the start where he sat there and the DeLorean's covered up and he said, I might even show you something at the end of this program. They could actually time travel for real. This is how I remember it. This is like kids' memory. I mean, if anyone knows this show or what it was, I wonder if it's on any of the Back to the Future, um, you know, box sets because I own every single one of them. Literally, buy each one as it comes out, even if it's only got five more minutes of footage I haven't seen. But I remember that, and it was, yeah, it was. And I found that once again, everyone was talking about it. You'd always get the kiddie at school who said he means seen a movie when he hadn't, and just completely make it up, uh, and you know. Well, he wouldn't ruin it for you because he just completely fucking lied. You'd always get that, but I can't remember anyone else seeing Back to the Future. But it was everywhere. It was in magazines. It was on TV. You know, like this little promo, all this reasonably sized promo and stuff like that. And so that's why we all went to see Back to the Future. And I know my brothers loved it, but I'm pretty sure they didn't walk out of that cinema like, like I was forever changed by the fact that this is just literally the best movie I've ever seen. And didn't yet know um, would be my favourite movie of all time. And nothing has even come close to it and i sincerely doubt nothing ever will and if they remake it i will find them down and i will stop them i will hurt them but yeah so ghostbusters and back to the future like two huge pop culture movies absolutely groundbreaking you know culture shaking shaping movies we saw in the cinema non-vhs i mean also we're of that age which is lucky as well and yeah was it simply because we didn't go that often that it made these two events absolutely mind-blowing. I do wonder that. I do wonder that. I might have to ask my mum, you know, one day, why we didn't go very often. And I'm pretty sure it will be the the money thing. But, yeah, so obviously there were loads of movies out coming out for kids and stuff like that. And, and just, I don't know, maybe it was a little bit of us as well. Like, unless it was shoved down our throats on TV, then we didn't really know it existed. Because it's a different time. No internet and stuff like that. Only word of mouth and obviously the kid at school who makes shit up. But... I'm ne pretty sure then the next movie we saw, and this is again because I remember this being on TV and obviously we love Back to the Future, was Team Wolf, which I believe came out after Back to the Future in this country, whereas it was before Back to the Future in the States because it was his first lead role, be a very, very small, low budget movie. But obviously because of the success of Back to the Future, again, this is how I remember it. I was a kid. Um, it was, you know, we got to get this out and capitalise on that. And so I remember he was on, I want to say TVAM. Michael J. Fox was on TVAM or you know, whatever the BBC One was, BBC One was, was I can't talk, uh, Good Morning Britain or whatever, talking about it, and I still can just remember him talking about how every single hair was glued on individually. And we were just like, blow from Back to the Future, he's a friggin' werewolf, need to see it. Loved that in the cinema. That didn't quite end up as being one of my favourite movies of all time, because even as a kid, I could clearly see uh, the difference in quality between this and Back to the Future. But, yeah, did absolutely love it. And then, obviously, we saw Basil. I want to say Basil is 1986, because this is that Spectrum game for it, and I do remember it being in Spectrum magazine. And that's, are we noticing a pattern here, was completely determined to myself and my brothers uh, by, again, being all over, you know, kids' TV. And, um, you know, obviously, the trade has been constantly repeated and stuff like that, but I don't know why, but Sherlock Holmes just appealed to us. And probably a lot of the times uh, stuff would appeal to us was whether or not you know, they had a segment on it on Blue Peter, but yeah, Basil the Great Mouse Detective uh, would have been the first animated movie I saw in the cinema. Uh, trying to think. Still, probably. Oh, but no, I saw South Park counts, don't it? I'm, I'm trying to think of animated movies I've seen in the cinema. I really, just CG doesn't count, not to me anyway. But yeah, so again, Outside Forces determined um, that that was, you know, another movie that we had to see and we absolutely loved it. So I mentioned at the start of this video, you know, one of the reasons I want to talk about it. Two more movies left that I can recall as a child that my mum took us to. Because you've got to remember, no, four more, sorry. But you've got to remember that obviously once we get to late 89, that's like I said when me and my mates would start going downtown and watching movies ourselves. Which said obviously 89 and 90 were brilliant years, we saw Back to the Future too. 
I saw that with my mates. I saw Young Guns 2 with my mates. I saw Back to the Future 3 with my mates. I saw Gremlins 2 with my mates, etc. Not with my parents. Um, but, yeah, so the next one we saw would have been when we were on holiday. The next two we would have seen when we were on holiday in Minehead. And there was no sort of outside force here telling us that, you know, oh my god, we must watch it. But the first one was um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which would have been 1984. Now, that would have been a PG in this country, wouldn't it? So therefore, was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, my favourite Indiana Jones movie, remember there are only three, censored in this country? Because obviously, um, in North America, it was the reason that the PG-13, that and Gremlins 3, uh, the PG-13 rating was introduced because of how dark and everyone losing their shit over it. But we saw that because we were on holiday in Minehead in a caravan and it was tanking down with rain. And obviously, anyone who went on those holidays uh, back in the day um, will remember that how little there was to do if you could not leave the caravan. You could not go around the campsite. You could not see your friends in other caravans. You could not ride a bike around the campsite. You could not go to the seaside. Um, it was just mind-numbingly dull and boring. So my parents drove us to Minehead. Uh, and so cinemas there, like Seaside Town cinemas, they would have literally two screens. In fact, quite a lot of cinemas had very few screens back then. I'm pretty sure the Odeon only had two, maybe, initially. Uh, and um, Camden probably only had two initially. I certainly don't remember there being any more than two movies on it at the same time. They were the two big cinemas. Although the one I saw Back to the Future in and Ghostbusters, I'm pretty sure, was the one that would have been behind that. NCP car park over the road from the vintage video game store in the horse fair means nothing to you um, Which charges you something like three pounds an hour to park then but anyway So yeah, they took us and there was only two movies on can't remember what the other movie was But obviously we were all very much familiar with Indiana Jones because at this point Raiders of the Lost Ark I'm pretty sure had been on TV and we would have seen it because my dad would have had it on a hooky video for sure and Definitely uh, we would have rented it so that determined that we saw Temple of Doom and again Massive impact on me because fucking amazing, but only went there um, because it was raining and my mum uh, had no choice. Oh, my dad, my dad was probably rubbing his hands and thinking I've got the caravan to myself for three hours. I'll have a nap. <laughs> um, yeah, so that completely determined why we went to see that movie. And um, yeah, again, um, mind blowing because it was at this point obviously it was still a really really rare event. So again, I'm pretty sure that's. You know, the more I talk about it, the reason that this was why these things became such great events. And almost I'm glad we didn't go that often because obviously I've made up for it, you know, as an adult um, and a young adult. But yeah, it certainly obviously made them bigger, better, more enjoyable experiences that have left them to see them marks on me. And then the next time, I think this would have been 1986, I want to say 86, uh, same thing happened. It was absolutely tanking down, nothing for us to do. Uh, so <laughs> um, we went to see Police Academy 3 because first two were 15 certificates, weren't they? And then the third one became a kid's movie because obviously all movies that make franchises that make lots of money get watered down into a kiddie rate at some point because obviously, you know, the sweet, sweet, sweet dollar and shit like that. But yeah, and we loved it because it was stupid and it was juvenile. But there were, you know, uh, that was literally the only movie we could see there. There was nothing else to see. I think the other movie would have been not like a kid's rated movie. And I can't, I can't recall seeing adverts for it on TV and stuff like that. And yeah, so... You know, not such a big experience up with all the other experiences, but again, this we only saw it because that was, you know, what was there and it was raining. But again, I kind of like these memories that, you know, come on, get your coats, we're going to the cinema. I'm not sitting inside with you lot in a fucking caravan all day while it pisses down with nothing to fucking do and a black and white TV that runs off a car battery. <laughs> um, and then, so obviously the next two movies that were probably the last two movies that I went to see with my parents was, and I'm not going to go into it in massive amount of detail because I've done a whole video on Batman 89. Look it up, nostalgic memories of Batman 89. But obviously you were going to see Batman. It was the law. You, if you were of an age and that was the first cinematic movie released that had a 12 certificate, it was 15 on video because why they don't exist on video and in the cinema at the same time when they're both done by the BBFC blows my mind. Uh, red tape probably, <clears throat> and over bureaucracy. But yeah, if you were of age, you had to go and see Batman. Like, w watch my Batman 89 video. That was just an absolute fucking mind-blowing movie to see. Although originally, um, Batman Returns was my favourite after, you know, of the two movies once I'd seen that in America in 1992. But obviously now as an adult, now that I've sorted my mental shit out and I'm correct, uh, it's Batman 89. But yeah, and then the final movie we would have seen my parents. Again, we had nothing but, you know, the sweets that she bought in. 
in, in, in all these experiences was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which, believe it or not, took more money than Batman. People don't seem to realise that. Globally, it took more money than Batman. How far we've come with The Flash and um, Dala Shit both tanking at the box office, because <laughs> obviously, 89. 2023. Actually, The Flash is a way better movie than Indy 5. Seriously, I didn't hate The Flash. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and that would have been it. That would have been all the movies that my parents... Or I went to see the cinema with my parents. After that, there was this little thing called um, Splash. There was an event raised by off -duty, I hope they are off -duty, otherwise fires, uh, you know, criminals, thieving, uh, you know, and... Um, fucking doctors or nurses and shit like uh, people would have been fucking they would have gone through the roof people would have been dying people would have been burning you know because <laughs> it was all off duty firemen policemen coast guard and nurses and shit and they did this thing called splash where you could go out for day events to keep kids occupied during the summer holidays and I guess keep them off the streets and stuff like that um, you know stop them being criminals and yeah not only did they do great, great stuff like you could go out sailing and shit like this cave in they'd never let you do that as a fucking 13 year old now would they go caving where it was wet and slimy and shit and you were fucking knackered and it was dead hard and it was scary as tits all the way through it dropping yourself down through narrow gaps Whew, they'd never let you do that now but also um they took movies so i'm guessing this is 1987 that were not quite ready to come out on video but been out in the cinema for a while uh, and they ordered Splash Day events and the Odeon and Frogmore Street did this and you could literally go and see a movie that was three, four, maybe five months old for like literally pounds. One pound fifty, maybe two pounds. And I remember we saw um, Police Academy 4. Uh, I'm not saying they were great movies. Uh, Star Trek 4 was fucking loved on the big screen. That was brilliant. And also this was different because... You were dropped off there and you were picked up by your mum, but there were people who would look after you and, you know, like I said, off duty with old Bill and stuff like that. You'd sit at the cinema, so, you know, like, but it, it was like a special event because you felt like, you know, like a little adult and shit because you're going out by yourself, but you're not by yourself because you're dropped off by your mum, picked up by your mum when you were looked after by, you know, off duty police firemen and stuff like that. But nonetheless, it was like you weren't there with your mum. Kind of made it, sorry, well, no offence. Thank you for taking to all the, the other previous movies. <laughs> But, um, yeah, kind of made it like a big, big deal. So Masters of the Universe as well, which might be why I'm one of the few people who absolutely loves the Dolph Lundgren Masters of the movie, uh, Mo Ma Masters of the Universe um, movie. So we saw three, Police Academy 4, Star Trek 4 and He-Man. And that, those are all the, vi the movies, videos, movies I saw in the cinema. When I sat down and wrote this out, um, I could not get over how few movies I saw in the cinema as a kid. And obviously my first one, which is the general question of this vlog, is... Um, Return of the Jedi, but yeah, and I truly do, 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 I can't, I have just finished work in my defence, <laughs> I truly do believe that it was the fact that this was such a rare event that made it such a big deal, such a treat, and just added that level of excitement to it, and just shaped it, it's such fantastic memories I have, and made it such a great experience that two of my favourite movies, three technically of all time, it's not Team Wolf, <laughs> and certainly my favourite movie of all time, came out of this absolutely limited amount of movies I saw in the cinema as a kid. Anyway, the point is, I'd love to know um, what the first movie you saw was uh, as a kid in the cinema. Is that even an English phrase? Sentence, sorry. Um, and also, <clears throat> how often did you go as a kid? Particularly if you're of my age, my vintage. Was it a really, really rare thing? Was that just my neck of the woods and everyone in Bristol was broke? <laughs> or was it truly a massive treat for you as well? Was it birthday parties, not just yours, but someone else's? Or your, your parents would very rarely take you because depending upon the size of your family, it would start getting really, really expensive. Bit random, even by my standards. What for the lot of bollocks, I am aware of that. But thank you very much for watching. I'd love to know what you think. I'll see you later.